five jobs today. How broad is that sky? Texels are from Texel. And Suffolk's are from, aye, aye. Quite a big personality <laughs> in this area. Fourth setup of the day. Not bad. Over the moon. <laughs> Good morning sheep fans, Cammy's the name, sheep's the game, and this is just what the mornings are like now. Very, very dark, and nice and cold, it's actually a beautiful morning. In Scotland, if we get a nice frosty morning, we love it because it means it's not raining, which is always better for your sheep. Now, I don't know, I was going to put the wrappers on here, but I've done one of those things where I don't know if anyone watches the, the whole Tom Pemberton thing with shutting the gates, I don't know if that's his idea or what that is, but... This is kind of like that, but it's for the wrappers, and I've made a mess of it. Forward a bit. So today, in this video, we have a lot of scanning to do. I... Let me just hear if there's anything dragging the ground. Because it's dark, I can't really see and I never checked, so... Sounds okay. So, in this video, yep, a lot of scanning. We are doing five jobs today, I think. Six moves, I think it is. So, yeah, not a lot of sheep numbers, essentially, but a lot of small jobs. It's always the same this time of year, getting the pedigree guys done. We might have some interesting breeds to see. I think we may have some blue domains to do which could be good fun. And we're back with John from Brick Row Beltex as well. Just had to shift the rapper gates there. One of the farmers we're at today is gonna to come and pick them up and use them. Great system, these sheep handling systems. For anyone who has sheep away from home and you don't have a setup, which is all of my sheep, more or less, there are 200 running around here where my mum stays with good sheep pens that you've seen loads on the vlog, because it's easy to make a nice video when you've got a good setup. But for most situations with sheep away from home, a set of mobile handling pens is just incredible. Like, what an invention. So I'm just leaving them at the end of the road so the farmer can come pick them up. Now, I need to go and put my scanning trailer on and see if I've got gates to do the ramp because the gates I got with the crate are too short for my trailer. I think we could almost make it do. What would I need? Some string do? Mm, that's the problem. Let's just take the trailer and see how we go. We'll make it up as we go along. How broad is that sky? What a lovely morning. There was a wee shower of rain there, but it is a beautiful morning. And what a service here with Davy. We're back with Tiller to do his second batch, his later lambing sheep. This is where I did the first matrix scanning video. I, I messaged him, says Davey, first day out with the trailer. Jack's not working. It's not been working for about two years. Need a Crystal X tub for underneath the front. Any supplies? Oh, got something in it, just gonna kick it. It's maybe I actually got some Crystal X in it, but what he doesn't know is I'm gonna take it with me because I need it at all the other places today. Let's get her set up. So close, so close to being a perfect fit. String, eh? Scotland would fall apart without it. Uh, this is all getting sorted. Get lugs put on this and... I know what you're thinking about that next year. <laughs> Uh, another thing I'm going to sort as well is adjust the height of this chair. So before it just sat on the ground, but now I need a wee frame on it because the whole crate's up a bit. It's a lot comfier as well for the scanner. Really, you want to be sitting with your, your legs around that kind of, maybe not quite 90 degrees, but not far off it. Whereas before, my legs were stretched out a bit too far. It's actually quite sore on the knees. Like that, puts a bit of pressure on the knees. Whereas if you can sit with your feet flat, it's much comfier. So we're in, we're set up, just need the farmer to get some sheep. 
It was a wee, I saw my wee over on the field there admiring the sunrise when I came in. Quite a nice morning, wasn't it? Beautiful morning, beautiful. You always get that up here though. I've not actually tightened my foot pedal yet either, so hopefully it doesn't fall apart. But if it does, the great thing about working round farms, they've always got tools and things you need. Is that not right, Davy? Yeah. Yes. You don't worry about things breaking or going wrong because there's always there's always somebody that knows what they're doing and there's always a tool for the job when you're at the farms. We're all set up. Just leaving the pickup hitched on for this. Davy's quite good. Rather than saying, listen, I need that you off, he's just made a wee makeshift. Ben's here with a man or two. Let's get some sheep up. For anyone who's watching, I know we now have a lot of people from the States and Canada watching and other countries around the world. These are Texels. This breed here is a Texel sheep and a Suffolk. These are pure Suffolk, pure. Would you call them UK type Suffolk? Maybe not, they're probably from the Netherlands or something originally. I'll need to look that up and fact check it. In fact, original country is here. Where are, the, where are Suffolk's from originally, Davey? Uh, Suffolk. Down the road? Suffolk. Oh, Suffolk? Oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Is that, aye, so Texels are from Texel. And Suffolk's are from, aye, aye. Etna, so. <laughs> Where's Aberfield then? Somewhere down south? <laughs> Aye, uh, <laughs> uh, so aye, uh, obviously Suffolk's are from Suffolk, so it's a UK breed. But you will see some of you commented saying that in America the Suffolk's are a lot uh, different than the Suffolk's we have here. These are a lot bigger, chunkier sheep, and it will be a slightly different kind of Suffolk. They're, you're maybe more towards the uh, that's sort of New Zealand Suffolk that they do. It's just it's the same breed, but they've just been bred for a slightly different reason. These are big, big meaty sheep. That's what we're going here. Davy's Davy's feathers actually a butcher. So they like the meat. That's that is? Yeah. How good's this new thing? I just like. I feel like I've not even got warmed up yet. Hey, we're going to have a new with that. That's a doddle. First job finished. We're on to the next one now. We're going to see Lainey Daff. Do you think Lainey will go in the vlog? Yeah, Lainey will love it. We're going to see Lainey and her bloody mains. Absolute monsters. At 55%, not, not this thing. This no, one. no, the blue domains. Blue domains do, and okay. the rouge do, and the Charolais aren't far away from killing out at a, a high percentage. So 55%? I actually know nothing. So, Lainey, we're here with Lainey Daff, who is uh, she's quite a big personality <laughs> in this area. Everybody knows her, especially in the show circuit. Uh, she has some very top class sheep, big into the blue domains, and does very well with them. Which is the, the Yorkshire show, in fact I'm showing you it here on the screen just now, that's the Yorkshire show and the we Royal Welsh, was it? Royal Welsh. Royal Welsh show champion 2019, which of course, unfortunately, was the last show we had because of bloody Covid. So there's no shows this year. You've been missing that this oh, year? Yes. Aye. It's, uh, it's such a good social event stuff. But she was just telling me, I think, a couple of things about Blue Domains because really I know nothing about Blue Domains other than their very sort of unusual skins on their faces. So she was saying this because they're skeletons. Yeah, they, very fine skeleton on them, and, very fine bound. And they kill out at fifty-five percent. Aye, fifty-five percent. Which I know nothing about uh, killing out percentages, but I know if Lenny's telling me that's good, it'll be good. The blue domain breed for a lot of you guys that maybe haven't seen them before, they're quite a prolific breed, especially on the good system they're on here as well, where they're, they're well looked after. There are a lot of show sheep, so they produce a lot of lambs for Lenny here. But interesting again, I keep talking to you guys in America and Canada because you're, you're always commenting about the different breeds of sheep you guys have. So if any of you have blue domains, then leave a little comment, let me know, it'd be really interesting. Might be another new breed for you. Let's get them scanned. No, I know yet, but eh. Uh, ah, oh, my back. David Rather. The back is a bit of goose, I think that's the problem. Hang on a second, I've got a plug there. There we go. 
So this is what I was saying about adapt and overcome. The battery's died already. Charged it last night, but it's done me four years or so. Maybe just on its last legs. Two. Last time. Perfect. At the next farm here, quite good actually. I told him my battery had died and that it wasn't holding the charge so well. And Angus there is uh, straight on the phone. Ordered one. Put it in the farm account. We'll sort it out later. AKA we'll forget all about it. This is the next lot we've got, 40 odd here to do it. Some more early lammers catching that early Easter lamb trade, that's the idea here. We'll get set up. I know you don't swear anyway, that's fine. So next lot here, we've got about 100 here, or 85 you said? 87 here. Uh, these are again, same story, it's just another shift. Fourth setup of the day, and these ones are again for that early Easter lamb that we're trying to get. So we'll get them through the scanner, get a look at them. Throw the drone up, eh? Another job finished here, on to our last one of the day now. So, quick wash up here before we go into the next place. So if you notice, I sat my feet out there so it didn't get soaked and then I just blew the hose right at it so that was clever. <laughs> Good job I didn't get rid of my tarf bag. Do I need it again? Just for my claim. Three touch. Beautiful. Lovely clutch control. You can switch after, it'll work off the battery, just so it is. So my last... La that last stop of the day, we uh, we left the battery at the last farm on charge because we were using the mains power. So we're going to hook this up to the vehicle here. Always lots of space. It's always a great setup with John, obviously. And we're, this is the so we did this. The video went out a few weeks, well, about two or three weeks ago now. It isn't even out yet, but that's me predicting because I'm doing that. I'm going to do that one for Wednesday when we did because we put the other one out early because John had the sale coming up. So. This is his recipient ewes that we're talking about in that previous video that have all had embryos implanted into them and we're going to find out now how well they've held. You think it's been good? Looks okay. Looks good. What's the, the red and green arses? The reds are the, the teaser tops. Oh, you're just killing the teasers? Teaser tops, we kill them all and we use the ones that are killed first. So that, we, so that we know they're marked. So what John was saying there is that he actually puts raddle on his teasers that way he knows they've definitely been jumped so they should definitely be cycling i'm right in saying that yeah so they should definitely be cycling so they're ideal for putting these embryos in because they're obviously fertile and cycling as they should be so they're obviously big sheep as we were talking about before like anything crossed with type mule sheep it's big milky good mothers they're monsters we'll run them through and see how they've gone so what we're doing here is we're writing down each ear tag number as we go, and that's all getting recorded out there. And I just shoot two, and I put a blue spray for two. I'll let it run again. Two. So more or less be two in nearly every sheep. And he's saying he put a couple of threes in as well. But he says there's a couple of threes in. There's also that chance that he's just uh, making sure I look at them properly. <laughs> there's there's ten, uh, 10 singles, 50 pair, and one set of triplets. Not bad. Over the moon. Great. Over eh? the moon. Great.
was 142 implanted. 142 implanted? Yeah. And you're only, I think it was only five that we said had come back to the top. Yeah. Or was it five had not held? The six not held. Six not held. Six, so six, six, six not out held. Six about 70. Not bad. Six out of seventy not held, which for anyone who isn't aware of the whole embryo thing, it's a real science and it's so easy. Any sort of disruption at all, or the yew not being a hundred percent, I'm no expert in it either. But I just know from other bits of scan that it's very common um, for them to lose that embryo. But the sheep's fine; she'll just come back round and go to the top as normal. But it just means you don't obviously get that pedigree lamb you're looking for. So, although there is six there that didn't hold, they've still ran with the top after, and. Four of the six, I could see they were already sort of 30 days. So some good, big, strong, fit sheep there for the embryo job. And that's us done for this one. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you've clicked the subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up. Cheers. And all going well, you never really know with James, but you may get to see the hardest working man in Ayrshire today. James, the boy that we're gonna go and see, has just texted me to say that he's put a stick in his eye and he's having to go into the opticians. Quite a James thing to do. He's sore on himself. He's sore on himself, I should say.